that was the introduction. And uh, now I need you to take a look at this. This is not an art appreciation class, I know, but I'm going to ask you, what do you feel looking at this? I just see it's, uh, it looks beautiful, awesome, gorgeous. The colors are just wonderful, exactly like you say. It makes me feel joyful, <laughs> hopeful, hopeful. There's light, life is beautiful. And I, I feel like I can do anything. I'm happy with all these colors. It's just wonderful to me. I don't know, maybe someone else might feel something else. Um, but all these different colors and the sun and the light, I'm just asking you, what do you feel? Okay, I'm not asking you to critique this artwork. It's just, do you like it or not? Ladies and gentlemen, the invitation from Dr. Kalaisi is that you would just uh, jump in if you feel like doing so and uh, express some opinion about what you are looking right at this time on your screen. Anyone? Okay, guys. You don't like this? Okay, let's let's just say this is something that lifts me up. Now, here's another one. And I'm going to ask you. Let's see. Oh, we have a chat. We have I love, it's exactly, it's full of life. Exactly, Kusima, right? Kusima, exactly, it's full of life. That's the feeling. Anyone else? Okay, here we go. Look at this one. This is called Las Meninas by Picasso. It gives me the creeps. It's gloomy. It's gray. It has this suffocating feeling. I don't like this painting at all. Or is it only me? Do you like, is there anyone who likes this? Maybe it's me, I don't know. How about this versus this? It's cold. It seems exactly depressing, exactly. Inemi, uh, Stefan, exactly, this is depressing. Cold, Julio Ferrara, mm, pre, pre, present from Luan. I, 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 I'm sorry, Julio, I didn't understand that. Um, do you like the second thing or what do you feel, Julio? Do you like the second one or? It makes you feel gloomy, frustrated, really depressing. I think we get the idea. Yeah? Oh, okay, okay. It's dark. It is dark, exactly. 
Okay, so this is Picasso. Uh, and um, let me just, okay. This is by Picasso. And um, I just need you to remember this feeling, okay? Just keep it for the moment. So it's going to be relevant as we move on, okay? So, um, Let's move. Oh my, okay. Now I'm gonna uh, have to ask the difference between innovation versus invention. Um, one has to do with advancing science. Invention has to do with finding new knowledge, research and putting it out there. This is brand new science. That's what Invention is saying. And it also has to do with patents. You have to go get a patent. But with innovation, you don't need to do that. You don't need to have anything patent. No patents, basically. But with Invention, what you care for is bringing novelty, anything new to the scientific world, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a guy most of you uh, know, probably. Um, this is Nikola Tesla. Uh, two people entered the waiting room. Um, okay, I think I'm going to admit all, okay. Um, so this guy, Nikola Tesla, Please by, the way, by the way, Dr. Lysi, you don't need to worry about if you're in the waiting room, I'm monitoring the room okay. and I will admit anybody who shows up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So please read this, Nikola Tesla. Can you imagine dying alone? And this guy was in debt. No one knew about him until two days later. And he is an inventor, a major, major guy. So basically inventors don't care about money, I guess. But innovators, are all about money. So that's the major difference. If you're doing any kind of innovation, you can take a patent and commercialize it, or it really doesn't even have to be patented as long as it's turned into money. So you're basically taking research and commercializing it, turning it into money. Now, um, the uh, formal definition of innovation says uh, you're going to be uh, taking a product or process which is going to be new and it's going to be significantly different from the previous version. And also there's going to be potential users. So we're going to have customers for this product or process which is significantly new. Um, the, this definition comes from something called the Oslo Manual, uh, the first version of uh, what was in 1992. So it keeps revising this definition. Uh, but it's, you know, this definition, you don't really need to memorize it. The key word is new product and process. But as time went on, different forms of innovation evolved. And I'm going to give you some examples because um, it's really easy to find examples of innovation. So I'm just going to cruise through that and I'm going to bring you to a point where you're going to have to um, use this in your life, okay? Probably the latest uh, product innovation 
that's going to affect all our lives is chat GPT because um, it's artificial intelligence at work. It's touching our lives and it's a brand, brand new product. I mean, we knew artificial intelligence was coming, but now it's right at the uh, tip of our fingers. Uh, wh whatever we ask, it's there to answer so we can actually use it. And uh, I haven't had a chance to eat Impossible Burger, but this is burger made from plants. Uh, they did it, and I didn't know about this, but I found out about it while uh, preparing this lecture. And it's, it is impossible. It sounds pretty impossible, but it's not. So it's meat made from plants. Um, so these are examples of product innovation. Um, so here we have... Oops, we have process innovation. Why do I have the same thing over here? Chat GPT, again, with process innovation. Now, I'm going to give you an example from my son's life. My son is studying international relations uh, and it's his senior year. Um, it's social science. And uh, somehow the department has made him take a software course, a coding course. And he doesn't really want to do it, but he has to do it. So he took the course and um, he was having a hard time learning coding. And uh, I was wondering how he was going to, you know, go through the midterms and the final. And he said he was getting help from ChatGPT. And I said, OK, but you won't be able to you know, get help from chat GPT in the final exam. So you need to learn it somehow. And he said, well, yeah, midterms are approaching. So I need to find a way to learn the coding thing. And he said, I'm getting help from chat GPT learning the stuff. And I said, how do you do that? And he says, well, I'm asking questions to the instructor or the TA and they don't have the time to reply. But chat GPT gives me answers instantly, 724. It's like a private instructor I hired for free. And he actually scored 94 out of 100. So basically, this um, chat GPT stuff is going to change the way we are conducting classes, the way learning takes place. And unless instructors find a way to uh, better uh, be there for the students or add value to the classes, they're not going to be able to cope with the competition, especially with courses like coding. Um, so there's going to be serious innovation in teaching thanks to uh, ChatGPT. Okay, so processes are going to be challenged. Marketing innovation. Now, when you're probably you all know about Airbnb anyways, that's uh, they provide accommodation services to uh, people uh, using uh, regular apartments or regular people. But what they provide is accommodation at their core, the service. Um, but they realized talking to their guests that these people while staying at these places were actually suffering from what to eat. Like they didn't know what to eat, where to go, how to hang out, where, stuff like that. So eventually they said, we have to come up with an app who's, that's going to augment the, uh, our services of accommodation. And that's how they started marketing themselves with this app at serving their clients basically. So this is also um, an example of marketing innovation. Um, organizational innovation. Usually when you, this is before pandemic, we had different types of organizations. Think about companies, hierarchical organizations, flat organizations, these are structures, the building structures of people working in a company, if you will. So matrix or functional, you know, all these different types of organization. And when the pandemic hits, we're all locked in our homes. There's no offices. So basically uh, the 
computer makes us all equal and a new form of organization emerges and we're meeting at Zoom. Everybody's equal, everybody is there to speak their voices. And uh, this is a totally different organization, basically. And it saves a lot of money for companies, uh, all the rent and all the other expenses they cut down due to commuting or the office space, machinery and all that. So organizational innovation is another type, which is not listed in the formal definition. Um, of course, this is the byproduct of staying home, uh, parents suffering from uh, their uh, work while staying with their kids at home trying to work. So um, here's another type, social innovation. Um, this is a, a caption from Barefoot College in India. This lady in red is uh, teaching this lady in orange how to cook in this device, which is solar powered. This is the campus, college campus in India. And Barefoot College um, has the intention or the mission of uplifting rural women in India by teaching them, educating them in uh, uses of solar power, in healthcare, and other uh, skills so that uh, as a community, they can uh, raise their life standards and change the way they're living. That's social innovation. Um, now, all those different types of innovations are one group, I would say, uh, but there is technological innovation. I would like to show you a table um, made by the Imperial College in the United Kingdom. They have actually worked on all the future technologies and they made a table out of this. Uh, let me go to this table real quick. And I'm going to show you this table. So it's like the periodic table. Uh, let me, okay. So this is how it looks, okay? In the x-axis, we have the time. So over here, oops, can you all can see this, right? Sorry, I lost. Let me see. Can you all see the table? Okay, good. All right. So basically in the x-axis, we have the time. So this is sooner and this is later. And in the y-axis, we have low technology and high technology. So basically, as we go from uh, the, as we go towards the Northeast, we're having technologies that are going to be out there in the future. So the green coded ones, are technologies that are already being produced. The green ones are technologies that are going to be coming in the market within 10 to 20 years. The red ones are going to be uh, launched after 20 years. The gray ones are highly improbable, but not impossible. So. Uh, I'm going to show you what they are. Uh, and these uh, little squares, each one of them represents um, the technology and the numbers. When we go over here on the right, uh, these are the names of the companies working on these technologies at the moment. So these are for real. Let me interject uh, real quick, uh, Dr. Kalaisis. Uh, on the chat line, there are some participants asking questions as to the visibility of the table oh, you're okay. talking about, and I'm assuming they have to click on the link, correct? Uh, I 
think I, I was sharing the screen. You are screen sharing, it says, but okay. No, Let's we are looking, we are looking at the screen, but uh, the section about the table you just referred to. Uh, there is a link in there, and I'm yes, not quite a, sure. they have uh, to if, click on the link, correct? Uh, but if if they're, they're using the PDF version, the the table won't come up. So ah, okay. Yeah, so they should be uh, looking at my screen. Okay, I got you. Um, that's why I want to make sure. Um, they were seeing the screen. Um, hold on. Okay, it says I am sharing the screen. Hold on, hold on a minute. Okay. In terms of sharing your screen, if you have the table underneath of uh, what your actual presentation is, we are not gonna see that uh, table. Uh, uh, okay. okay, then I'm going to go back and click on this link and maybe that's probably going to, yeah. Do you see it now? Not at this, not as of yet, no. No? Hmm, well. It popped up on my screen, so what well, is not... again? As I said again, uh, what is emerging on your system right now is your presentation. If you click on the uh, link for the table on your end, you can see it. But so far, there is uh, the presentation that goes on top of anything else that goes on your screen. So you would have to temporarily uh minimize your presentation in order for us to see the second screen that you want to share ah okay so i did minimize it does everyone see it now uh, not yet no they uh, clara has uh, shared a link uh of the table and uh, victor says people should click on that link and it's going to be there Mahedran uh, Siva says we have to click on the link. I can see it. So I think some of them are able to see it. Okay. All right. I, I can see it, but you just, can't. Uh, no, I still cannot. Uh, if you could like click on the link Clara has provided in the chat box. Uh, okay. Because this, this table is mind blowing. I really want to show this table because. It's just wonderful. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, this is it. Uh, I should it? And click okay. uh, on my end. I can see it now because I clicked on Good. the link from the chat yes. block. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. So Victor shared it. Yeah, but it's like it looks it looks like the periodic table and we need to go deep into it to understand what's going on. And um, I want everyone to zoom in uh, to number one. It says smart nappies. Now, how can a nappy be smart? Yet it's being produced uh, now. I mean, th these green ones are being produced now. And um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just blow it a little bit so that I can read what's going on. Okay, number two, deep ocean wind farms. Okay, um, vertical agriculture. I mean, this is okay. So we know this vertical agriculture, what's the big deal? Uh, but um, as we go to the right, the yellow one, uh, balloon powered internet, powered exoskeletons. My screen sharing is paused, it says. I don't know why. Well, oh, this sucks. I really wanted to show this. Um, anyway, guys, this is really mind blowing. I wish you could just, you know, spend some time because these are technologies 
that are going to change our lives. And I'm just going to read through it. At least you can hear what I'm saying, okay? Even if you can't see it and you can spend time later maybe uh, on this uh, table so that you have an idea. You can even apply to these companies because these companies are basically going to be shaping the uh, future and they're going to really uh, Im impact our lives. Uh, water harvesting from air. This is yellow, meaning it's already coming within 10 to 20 years, okay? Uh, autonomous passenger aircraft, so self-flying aircraft, self-flying planes. Human organ printing. So this is about to arrive our lives within 10 to 20 years. A little bit later, we're going to have bioplastics, four-dimensional materials. I wonder what the fourth one is. Fusion power, new materials, low-cost space travel, planet colonization. Imagine we're going to colonize Mars or something. There are companies working on this. So uh, let's go to the technology side. There is um, life expectancy algorithms battlefield robots, AI board members. And let's look at some of the improbable but not impossible ones. Space elevators, artificial consciousness, space solar power, human cloning. I mean, this is, this is blowing my mind because this thing is already uh, in action. That's what's happening. Uh, and it's very, very interesting. Okay. Do we have any questions at the moment? Um, okay. So can, can, can you see the uh, slide now? I'm back to the slide. Okay, good. So not all technologies are going to be as disruptive as these ones. So uh, there is something called incremental innovation. And uh, on your screen, you're seeing uh, the uh, development of the razor blades. This is not rocket science, but from 1900 to 1998, the head was not moving. And 1998, it started moving, the moving head. And in 2014, 2010, the number of razors are increased. So this is incremental innovation. And this is what companies usually do. Um, something called frugal innovation, okay? And uh, the refrigerators, in India, they don't use electricity because there is no grid at certain places in the rural um, India. But since Earth has a, a constant temperature, clay-made refrigerators can keep the um, vegetables fresh for two to three days. Or if you look at here, we have a bottle full of Clorox and water. And when the sunlight hits this potion, it turns into a lamp in the hut. And this is frugal, meaning um, out of necessity. This, these are um, devised or they came out out of necessity, and uh, it's called frugal innovation. Another type uh, is open innovation. Uh, you all know Lego. Lego is a you know major company, but obviously they're running out of ideas, and they are opening uh, up the floor for uh, new ideas. And oh, someone's saying this is scary stuff in the chat. <laughs> well, yeah, some of them are, but, you know, 
maybe they're going to be real, maybe not. So, um, well, uh, Lego opens up the floor for um, new ideas, for new games, and people vote. Someone comes up with an idea and people start voting. So this Apollo Saturn V was a product of uh, open innovation. Uh, it received more than 10,000 votes, and that's how Lego decided to uh, produce it. So it's not internally generated, but it's an uh, open innovation example. And um, okay, there's two different concepts, radical versus disruptive, and I'd like to distinguish between these two because they got, they get confused with one another. Um, when something hits the market, usually it's an invention that uh, is not known before, like Apple in 1976. It's the first of its kind ever. There's no PC, there's no computer, no personal computer in 1976 so this is the first of its kind and it blows everybody's minds where that's why it's radical but it's not disruptive whereas uh, mobile mobile phones did exist before smartphones came but smartphones disrupted the mobile phone market so they are also very very different but they are they were not non-existent if you will um so what does this all have to do with you, right? Okay, so we know about innovation, all its different types, and okay, so what? Well, basically, if you innovate, you're going to be essential, meaning you're not going to have to worry about, will I be fired, or uh, will I get enough raise in my job, or uh, what's going to happen to me kind of thing. Because innovation means you know how to solve problems. If you know how to innovate, you know how to solve problems. That's why if you innovate, you're going to be essential. Now, how do we do that? I'd like to start with um, a quote from Rumi. Okay, it says, forget safety, live where you fear to live, destroy your reputation and be notorious. Look at this, look at this house. It's not safe at all. I don't know if you guys know about Rumi. He's a mystic, a spiritual leader from Turkey, from Persia and Turkey. And um, so, if you want to be innovative, where do you start? That's the question. This is where you start. You don't start by asking, should I do product innovation? Should I do process innovation? Which form of innovation? No, forget about it. The reason I showed you all the ugly work, if you will, is because in life, whenever we have this frustrated feeling, there's always a problem. And whenever there's a problem, there's an opportunity for innovation. So you need to watch your feelings to innovate. That's number one. Why? I'm going to show you another painting. This is also called Las Meninas, and it dates from 1656. And it's a pretty clear painting. I mean, there's nothing you know, abnormal or anything about it. Um, but I'm going to put those two Las Meninas next to one another. Now I need you to look at this. Look at this figure. There's a figure over here. There's a dog-like thing, and there's a dog over here. There's a big bell-shaped dress lady and there's this one over here and there's a guy at the back there's a guy at the back there's a canvas over here there's a ladder over here there's a person over here person so basically what happened is this in terms of art uh, Picasso took uh, Velasquez's version of Las Meninas and reinterpreted it but what I need you to remember is life 
gives us problems. Life gives us frustration, depress depressive feelings, totally uh, not, not easy, uh, gloomy kind of feelings. But if you take that problem and if you work on it, then the clarity comes and you can actually see clarity. You can see it, what it, it really is. But it looks complicated. It looks very frustrating at first sight. With innovative thinking, you can turn the right into left. Okay? So you need to fuel that feeling of frustration and uh, turn it into opportunity. I'd like to give you an example from my life uh, at uh, Coopers and Librand. When I was um, a fresh college grad, it used to be called Coopers and Librand. Now it's Price Waterhouse Coopers. Um, it's an audit company, and we used to go and uh, look at these companies' books and uh, find if report whatever we find faulty or um, not in the best practice, let's say. So I was supposed to go and do a sales cutoff test, okay, certain type of accounting uh, test. And I was pretty confident because I did all my work, but I was not able to perform this test. And I felt miserable, really bad. Um, I went to the restrooms, cried my eyes out. And finally, I accepted that I was not good enough. I was a fool. I was stupid, dumb, idiot. That's what I was feeling, all the frustrations coming out. And I went to the supervisor, admitted that I cannot apply this test. And the supervisor took me to the assistant manager. And the assistant manager took me to the manager. And the manager looked at it and took the phone, called the uh, United Kingdom headquarters. And United Kingdom said, you cannot apply this test in this insurance sector. And the manager looked at me and said, you're the first first year assistant that actually taught me something. Thank you very much. So I actually didn't know what I was doing. I was just feeling my frustration, owning it, risking being called stupid, dumb, and fool. And eventually, it led me to a thank you from the company because I was introducing knowledge, new process, uh, because that meant we didn't have to do that test to the insurance sector anymore. That means um, cost saving. Time saving means cost saving, and that means making more money. Years later, when I was uh, right after my PhD, when I was having a wonderful time with my students, doing my work classes, the university administration called and said, I want to, we want to thank you because uh, we don't want to work with you anymore. And I said, why? What's wrong? What, what's my fault? You know, what's my mistake? And they said, no, we don't, we just don't want to work with you. And I said, I'm a single mother. This is my bread and I'm doing my job and I want to uh, stay because I want to do it. I know I'm doing good. And I had to find a way. It was a very difficult time, really frustrating. And I thought, what should I do? What does the university need? Okay. And money, grants, that's what universities need. I applied for an entrepreneurship course development, course curriculum development grant, and I won it. I actually won it for three years. Uh, and since it was uh, received on behalf of the university, the university had to withdraw the firing threat. And uh, it led to uh, the university securing a leading place at the Entrepreneurial University Index in Turkey. They started using this ranking place uh, in recruiting students because it was a private university. It had to compete for um, college. Uh, recruitment. And I kept my job. And I also was able to launch the innovation innovation project course, which was um, 
really expected by the students. So I got four birds with one stone, all because I followed the feeling of frustration and came up with a different way of thinking and introduced a new product to the university in the form of a grant. And then I moved on and got another international grant from British Council and it moved on like that. So if you want to be essential, if you want to be the critical person that your job cannot get rid of, I mean, you, you, you want to be uh, the person that people are relying on. You want to be the person who keeps re establishing themselves, creating a new you out of you all the time, then you need to follow your frustration. You need to stay hungry and stay foolish because you probably know the commencement speech of Steve Jobs, the late uh, big time entrepreneur who changed our lives with smartphones. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur and you don't need to be an entrepreneur, okay? I have big respect for entrepreneurs, but uh, you don't need to be an entrepreneur, but you can be hungry, you can be foolish. You, when I say you can be foolish, I don't mean you are an idiot. I don't, well, with the examples I'm showing you, I'm just telling you the power of vulnerability. If you're open to being called foolish, and if you take the risk of being called foolish, treasures will unfold, and you're going to come up with opportunities of finding answers to questions and saving cost or getting praise. And there are ways of doing this. Obviously, it's not automatic. I mean, there's a lot of bitterness, there's difficulty, but it's possible, I, and I know I did this. I taught many kids, I mean, many kids to me, kids, because my kid is 21 now. Um, but this is, this is perfect because you can make, you can render yourself invincible in terms of keeping your job, getting respect and getting a good salary. That's what you deserve. If you are not, doing what everybody else is doing, which is being afraid. Be afraid, but go, stay hungry. Any A person who's hungry always goes after food and they, they do things. Whatever uh, they can do, they go after it. And they don't care if they're being called foolish or not because eventually they're going to fail, fail, fail. What matters is one day they're going to be successful. That's what matters because learning happens with failure, right? Learning doesn't come automatically. Success is not magical. It's, there's blood, sweat, and tears in success, but it comes if you believe in yourself. So innovation is a mindset, okay? And you have to partner with the right people, of course. You, you don't innovate on your own because when I was applying to all those grants I was asking so many questions to all people around me and I didn't care I had a PhD so what I can't know everything what I know what I've learned from a PhD is I don't know everything what I know is I can learn I can ask and I don't care if they call me dumb I don't care that's it so it's the mindset. And if you want to ask me questions, I'm leaving here my email. And um, it's not easy to be called foolish to risk that, but um, I promise if you take that way, then you're going to find so many treasures in your life. I know you're going to be very, very happy eventually. So now I'm going to open the floor for questions, if you have any, or comments, um, if anyone wants to say anything. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Elif Kalaisi. I have read the uh, comments on the chat line, and 
All of them are praising your outstanding uh, presentation. This is a topic that is uh, our lives. It uh, has to do with uh, whatever we're doing in our lives. As I said at the very beginning, uh, the opportunities are there. We don't have to stay in some type of status quo, whatever we're doing. Uh, we've got to get into those uh, open innovations. Uh, you've told us about all these uh, examples of disruptive technologies that can uh, really prove uh, mind blowing. I'm using your own term, Dr. <laughs> Leif. <laughs> in terms of uh, what those technologies would uh, allow us to achieve or the extent that they will definitely change our lives uh, it is really outstanding what what you've done and as i said again i am uh, echoing uh, what uh, the participants have said so far about your presentation it is now their turn as they suddenly have questions uh, pretty much mm -hmm. like you allow them to uh, ask Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours right now. Uh, we are ready for your questions. All you have to do is uh, raise your hand uh, electronically, not just uh, doing like this electronically. <laughs> uh, electronically, that simply means uh, there is a horizontal menu at the very bottom of your screen where you will see one of those options there is uh, called reactions. If you hover your mouse around that uh, reactions uh, icon at the very bottom, you will see some uh, options. And uh, one of them is uh, a hand. You click on it, and uh, we will see it. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we certainly have now Herbert uh, Sumbuga. Uh, go ahead, uh, Herbert. The floor is yours right now for your question to Dr. Talaisi. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Herbert Yesubuka from Uganda, Kampala. Uh, totally, I'm so grateful for the wonderful presentation. And uh, I have enjoyed it personally. It has been so wonderful. Thank you so much. Secondly, I would like to know if you have some booklets uh, as regards for this uh, presentation, which someone can purchase. Uh, let me say, uh, in one way or another, if someone can pay for it and uh, also receive it like me, who is in Uganda, because I can see a great, great message in your place, it's there, there. So I would need to be advised how I can access to your uh, booklet, see if they are there. And I believe sure. I think they are there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent question, Herbert. Um, I don't have any, uh, I mean, there are, this is such a dispersed, such a big topic. Okay. Yes. I mean, there are thousands of books. I didn't write any books on it, but um, what I'm assuming is if you would like to learn how to innovate, um, you could uh, basically follow entrepreneurial courses. It's yes. out there, it's everywhere. I mean, there's design thinking, there's um, lean manufacturing, there is um, agile production, agile uh, business modeling. Uh, so uh, Steve Blank's course is free of charge from Stanford. I would highly recommend that. It's an entrepreneurial course. I can share the link with you. Uh, but this is a mindset. And uh, what I would suggest is really quickly go through anything electronic, get the information, and start applying it right away because you're going to learn it from your own mistakes. And you have to, you have to just watch for problems of people, your own problems or people from your work. And first, you need to pin down what the problem is. Definition of the problem is your starting point. If you do not know what the problem is, you have to identify exactly. You have to identify the problem. 
Exactly. But but it's not yeah. easy because sometimes when you ask to the customer what the problem is, they don't know how to state it. So you have to look at the system from a macro point of view and you need to put down all the players and all the processes and you have to look at it like a picture and then you can see what the problem is and there are different ways of looking at it. There is brainstorming for creative ideas and then comes which idea to pick. You need to ask around. So uh, if innovation is something like you don't want to spend days and years reading, okay? You can skim through stuff and dive into it. This is um, agile. This is the way you approach. You do it, you learn from your mistakes, and then go look it up again real quick, start doing it again, fail, learn again, ask around, to keep trying, because this is learning by doing, okay? I'm not saying don't go to the library, stop reading, or drop out of school. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get your problem very specifically identified. Put down your questions. Go chase the question one by one in ChatGPT or wherever, okay? But Steve Blank's course, that uh, Stanford course, is free of charge. It's in Udacity and it's it's like eight hours or something. It gives you the mindset, but you have to you know, really watch it a number of times so that you get it into your head because you're going to go do some cold calling. Uh, it's not easy to talk to people you don't know. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I need to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question, Herbert. Thank you for your response, Dr. Kalaisi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's an opportunity to remind you this is your time this is your floor right at this time don't hesitate if there is any item of uh, dr glyce's presentation that was not very clear to you uh, this is the opportunity this is also about innovation it's a problem so that's an opportunity to uh, resolve the issue and share knowledge with uh, people around you so Go ahead, please. I'm watching the uh, wedding room. I'm watching everybody uh, waiting for your uh, questions or if it happens to you to maybe uh, express a concern or share a comment. The floor at this time is yours. Go ahead, please, and ask your questions. Dr. Valston, I think there's a question in the chat. It says, chat GPT can innovate too. How would we know which is authentic and which is not? Uh, Mahendran, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would think chat GPT is definitely going to innovate, but what matters is um, it, we, we really don't care whether it's authentic or not. What we care for is, do you make money out of it? Is there a customer for it? If there's no buyer for the innovation, then it's dead. Yes. And as long as there's a buyer for it, then you don't care whether it's authentic or not because someone came up with it because ChatGPT is uh, as good as the input information. Whoever feeds the information is going to get the, so the right question is what matters. And that's what I was telling to Herbert. You need to know the right questions to be able to solve the problem. So what is the problem? What are the sub questions to identify the uh, problem correctly? And then you can give the problems to ChatGPT and get the answers and design it in such a way which is going to make your customer happy, get the money. So you don't care about authenticity or not. Over here. Sego Motso, uh, if you have a question, we're ready for you at this time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Balshan. Is it Dr. Lambert? The Balshan. Right. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Whatever. Okay, Dr. Kalaji, a wonderful, uh, brilliant um, uh, um, presentation uh, from you. Mm -hmm. I am in South Africa and uh, uh, we experience uh, load shedding due to various reasons. 
And uh, I wish I could be as you know, innovative as you are. I'm interested in, in what you shared with us, I think is, is from the Philippines, yes. where yes. one can generate light from yes. uh, water, sunlight. Yes, and, and Clorox. 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 You, you use it for uh, cleaning. Clorox is oxygen. Oh. You know, it smells oh. really bad, but it kills all the bacteria. You know, all housewives know it. All right. I mean, I use it all the time. <laughs> so you just put it in a bottle and you, uh, just like I showed it, um, and water and Clorox mix in a, uh, in a bottle like this, yes. remove the tag and stick it in your uh, roof. The sunlight is going to, you don't need to do anything. You're just going to have to yes. cover it up maybe a little bit so that it won't fall down and then okay. it's going to turn into a lamp that's it automatically yeah. i am definitely going to try that uh here at home because very soon we'll be going into the into darkness again thank you very much wonderful uh, presentation <laughs> thank you, you Nitaili. Uh, we are making room right now for an fonje awa juponi uh, go ahead, uh, Awa. We are not getting your audio. Uh, let's see. You can't hear. Awa, you can't. your audio is not responding. So we're going to switch now to Mangong, uh, Madbio. Go ahead, uh, uh, Madbio. Thank you, Professor, for the excellent presentation. It's already a deep feeling in me and mine open to have such a presentation today. You know, one of the things that I learned from this presentation that I've said earlier, uh, you said uh, the frustration. So innovation is starting with the frustration. Sometimes everything we do in life is start with the frustration. For example, if you don't have a car and you borrow somebody's car every day, there's a one day you'll say, no, you don't need to take my car today, I'm so busy. And then tomorrow you'll come like feeling sad, okay, he's busy, but why would keep me always to call a, a car to him? It's because I don't have. So tomorrow you'll feel sad and save your money and buy your own car, you become an independent person. And that's that seen from frustration. You do, you do not take it personally with him, but it changed your life to have something independent. And as me here, when I start my education in my first bachelor in India, my family doesn't have anything to give me. And I was supported by uncle who, who went to, to have education before. And a little I'm getting from him is not that sustaining me. Mm -hmm. But I feel frustrated with the sake of education and went to India with anyone knowing that I'm traveling to India, but the money that I save, and I feel frustrated from education. You know, South Sudan got independent in 9 July 2011, where there is a problem of education. People are not educated. A high level of literacy is so huge, which is 99%, you can say it. Mm -hmm. So and a family does not have money to support their kids to education they want it. So I and some other people who feel frustrated, I got a little money and save it and go for education. When I went to India, I got a very good professor who is a principal of the my college, which is Ferguson College. His child was in the U.S. studying and somebody was helping his child to continue his education. He said, I will take care of you. And later on, when you study and finish your education, you will go back and get a job and send back the money that you spent it. And we put you under a student loan. This is where that a frustration that I've seen it today as in, uh, in uh, an aviation, innovation uh, study, it's helped me. So without that frustration last time, I wouldn't be having my, my first bachelor degree in science now, 
And because of that frustration that I have got it today in my second bachelor in political science, and I'm really grateful to have you, Professor Nam, and God bless you wherever you believe. And, uh, and I'm really thankful for Atlantic University giving me opportunity to have a second bachelor in political science and have you today as a professor of the subject that I never had before in life, which is innovation study. So I appreciate your time. And I value your time. Thank you, ma'am. You'll be okay. Thank you. And thank you, presenter, our professor. Thank you for giving me opportunity. And I really uh, salute you. I salute you, all of you, and our colleague, our <laughs> brothers and sisters, and uncle who are with us. Thank you. That's my turn. Thank you. I'd like to say something to all of you. Um, you don't need money in life. Money is going to flow to you if you know how to solve problems. If you spot problems, problems equals dollar signs. Like if you see an old lady not being able to carry something, go and help her. Maybe she's not going to pay you back with cash, but she's definitely going to remember you and help you one time in your life. And do just the mindset of how can I help? How can I solve problems? How can I be of service is going to generate a force that's going to turn into money later on. Because if you help people, people will help you back at your worst times when you're feeling all alone. You're just going to get people coming and helping you and talk to people, ask for help. You don't need to ask for money. You just need to go and offer your help. It's definitely going to turn into cash later on, but that's how you initiate yourself. That's how you be reborn. You got to be reborn and you got to get out of your comfort zone and, you know, be the foolish guy. You're not foolish. If whatever they see, it, it reflects back to them. If they see foolish, then they're foolish. If they see beauty, then they're beautiful. So it's nothing to do with you. It's their perception. Whereas if your perception is, I'm seeing problems, I'm seeing solutions everywhere, then it's just going to be a beautiful world. It will. I've been there. And I'm still going through problems, by the way. Problems are good. They are opportunities. So depression comes. I've been on drugs. I've had difficult times and yet they made me stronger you're going to have your difficult times it's the classes you're learning what did you learn from those difficult times that is the question okay so you guys are all equipped whether you have cash or not don't worry about that we all started out from the same thing yes. it's all learning, learning, and feeling stronger. And that's how you're going to turn things into cash. Thank you very much uh, for this last statement, which we want to consider as a conclusion. We would uh, really wish uh, to have you, Dr. Elif Kalaisis, for the whole day. I personally <laughs> enjoyed every statement, everything that has happened during this uh, live class session of Atlantic International University. You've been really quite awesome, Dr. Kalaisi, and I also want to hope uh, you will be pleased to uh, be with us at some point in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been also very, very good by uh, being here in attendance to this uh, session. Uh, had it been for your attendance, then there would not have been a live class session. We want to express our uh, thanks and uh, gratefulness to each and every one of you. I want to invite you again tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, one thing that I also loved about uh, Dr. Kalaisi's presentation is uh, as we are now concluding the event that uh, Kalaisi will be with, with us kind of uh, 24 <laughs> to 24 hours a day. 
because she <laughs> provided us with uh, her email address, which is very rare. I am uh, very thankful to you for that. Uh, I praise your presentation in that context as well, Dr. Kalaisi. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions uh, as uh, this class is ending, uh, Dr. Kalaisi will be delighted to answer your questions, which you will send to her through her email address. Thank you very much again, Dr. Kalaisi. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have really loved this session, and I hope uh, it is likewise on your end. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Be blessed. <laughs> bye, bye Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, our presenter. Thank, Thank you so you. much. <laughs> bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank bye. you so much. See you another day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bless you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. 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 Bye. I appreciate it. This is wonderful. <laughs>